Zero One Scoop, take off two two right up to ten thousand. This is Edwards Air Force Base in California. Dawn breaks over the desert as a strange aircraft taxis onto the runway. Its nose stretches an unprecedented 11 meters, nearly a third of its entire length. Where other planes have a cockpit, this one doesn't appear to have any windows. Since the early days of supersonic travel, one major problem has remained unsolved, something no one has even attempted since the tragic story and retirement of the Concorde, breaking the sound barrier without the boom. No one, that is, except NASA. Behind closed doors, their top engineers have been secretly working on a highly advanced aircraft. The mission? Build a supersonic jet without the explosive sonic boom. Hey, I'm your host Regis, and today we're uncovering how NASA has been secretly developing the most advanced supersonic jet. This is the sonic boom, an unavoidable side effect of supersonic flight that has plagued aviation since we first broke the sound barrier. In 1947, Chuck Yeager proved that humans could actually fly faster than the speed of sound. But that achievement came with a price, a thunderous explosion that would follow every supersonic aircraft. The sound was so powerful that it shattered windows and scared livestock from miles away all their complaints. One lady complained that her, her chickens quit laying eggs. Whenever a sonic boom came, her chickens quit laying eggs. And uh, there were lots of windows broken in the city, and people were complaining about that. This controversial side effect faded away over the years, until the 1970s, when an exciting attempt to revolutionize air travel arose. The Concorde emerged as a symbol of the future, a sleek, delta-winged marvel promising to shrink our world by flying at twice the speed of sound. Crossing the Atlantic Ocean in just three and a half hours, the Concorde offered an onboard experience that felt futuristic for its time. Since passengers couldn't hear the sonic booms from inside the cabin, a large display showed their speed as a reminder of just how fast they were flying. But the contrast between the Concorde's luxurious onboard experience and that of the people who lived beneath its flight path sparked unexpected backlash. What was a marvel to some became a menace to others. Public outrage grew, and soon, one by one, nations began closing their airspace to supersonic travel over land. Instead of linking continents in record time, the Concorde was pushed out to the fringes of the world that its routes were confined to open oceans. Still, it endured for nearly three decades, a relic of a future that never fully arrived. And then came the crash. In 2000, Air France Flight 4590 burst into flames upon takeoff, killing all on board and shattering the future of the Concorde. Public confidence crumbled overnight, with its high operating costs already straining its future the tragedy delivered the final blow. By 2003, the last Concorde touched down for good. Not because we had given up on supersonic travel, but because we had never solved its most fundamental flaw, the sonic boom that made it unwelcome in the skies. To understand why this problem was so difficult to solve, we need to take a look at what actually creates a sonic boom in the first place. The moment an aircraft punches past the sound barrier, it doesn't just create a single boom. It drags a continuous shockwave behind it, like a speedboat carving a wake through water. These merged waves then hit the ground as a sonic boom, measuring around 105 decibels, about as loud as a techno club in Germany. For 50 years, engineers tried to tame this phenomenon. They adjusted shapes and modified designs, but the laws of physics seemed unbeatable. The boom was considered an unchangeable fact of supersonic flight. Until now.
Today we are witnessing history. How many people are excited to see the X-59? With its revolutionary quiet supersonic technology. NASA's X-59 is about to achieve what many thought impossible. Supersonic flight with a sound no louder than a car door closing. That's the difference between a clap of thunder and a gentle knock. A reduction of 105 decibels to just 75. But achieving this meant completely rethinking everything we knew about aircraft design. To understand how engineers actually accomplished this, we need to go back to the drawing board. Literally. Designing an aircraft that could trick the laws of physics required a tool that didn't exist in the Concorde era. Supercomputers. At NASA's Langley Research Center, engineers started with a fundamental question. How do shockwaves actually behave around an aircraft? Using specialized wind tunnels, they made an important discovery. Shockwaves were not just single events, but formed at multiple points across an aircraft's body. While traditional aircraft designs allowed these shockwaves to merge into a powerful boom, NASA's engineers saw an opportunity. If they could keep these waves separated, they might be able to dramatically reduce the noise reaching the ground. In 2017, initial testing of a 9% scale model showed promising results. Using advanced flow visualization techniques, engineers could actually see how different shapes affected shockwave formation. This was, to put it mildly, a game changer. Through countless computer simulations, engineers refined every curve and angle. Each iteration was tested virtually, allowing them to predict how subtle changes would affect the aircraft's sonic signature. The wind tunnel tests used specialized imaging called Schlieren photography, which made shockwaves visible. This allowed engineers to verify their computer models and refine the designs further. By late 2018, after testing an 8% scale model with extreme angles up to 50 degrees, NASA had proof that their design could work. The question was no longer if they could quiet the boom, but how to build an aircraft around this revolutionary shape. The answer would push manufacturing technology to its limits and force pilots to completely rethink how they fly. What you're looking at might seem like a mistake. An aircraft with proportions so unusual, even experienced test pilots questioned its feasibility. As a test pilot, the first time I looked at the design, I went, huh, really had some questions about that. The most striking feature is its nose, stretching an incredible 11 meters, which is larger than a school bus, one third of the aircraft's total length. But this shape isn't just for show. It's about shaping the ripples it leaves behind. At supersonic speeds, air actually behaves a lot like water. Imagine a speedboat that instead of leaving large waves, creates a gentle wake, kind of like a kayak's. The long nose helps the aircraft to slice through the air so that the shock waves gradually diffuse along the body, reducing the impact of the sonic boom. But this unique nose design created another problem, one that would force engineers to completely reimagine how pilots fly supersonic aircraft. But before we solve that mystery, there's another unusual feature that catches the eye. Unlike traditional aircraft with engines under the wings, the X-59's engine sits on top of the fuselage. Now, this isn't just different for the sake of being different. By placing the engine on top, engineers found that they could shield the ground from additional shock waves. Now, let's talk about one of the most puzzling things about the X-59. The cockpit is not at the front of the aircraft. So how do you fly a jet when you can't see what's in front of you? Well, the solution is something straight out of science fiction. Because this particular jet has no regular way to look forward, NASA placed ultra high definition cameras for external viewing. So yes, this is a jet with no front windows. The X-59 doesn't have a forward facing window, so I won't be able to see where I'm going without a little help. At NASA, we've developed the external vision system but what happens if this critical system fails? Don't panic. If the XVS were to go dark mid-flight, the X-59 isn't flying blind. Test pilots have already proven that they can bring it down safely without the high-tech display. How? Well, by falling back on old-school instincts and some backup visual cues, like the side windows, the canopy's limited view, and a steady stream of critical flight data from the avionics. Basically, even if there is a glitch, this jet will still know how to find the runway. 
But the challenges don't end with visibility. When you're breaking the sound barrier, even the air itself becomes your enemy. Static electricity builds up on the aircraft's surface, enough to interfere with sensitive electronics. The solution? A special anti-static paint with Teflon-like properties, more commonly found in your kitchen. But perhaps the most demanding challenge of all lies in the construction itself. When you're manipulating shockwaves, every curve, every angle, and every surface must be perfect. One small imperfection could turn that carefully engineered thump back into a boom. That level of precision isn't happening in just any factory, as you might imagine. The X-59 is being assembled at Lockheed Martin's legendary Skunk Works in Palmdale, California, a place where aviation history is rewritten. To keep it lightweight and durable, the build process relies on advanced composite materials crafted with laser precision. Each section takes months of meticulous work, and while the development of the full assembly process has been stretching over several years, it's constantly evolving to adapt to new developments in avionics. So, at the moment, there's only one flight demonstrator in existence, and given its highly experimental nature, there are currently no plans to build additional units. Here, it's important to keep our expectations realistic. The good people at NASA and Skunk Works are making continuous refinements to the X-59 prototype as development progresses. They're working on a performance-based contract, which is government speak for, this is a high-risk project, so you better not crash this plane. That's why the demonstrator is being tested on the ground and in computer simulations as much as possible. As of March 2025, the plane hasn't even had its maiden flight. The prototype is essentially a hangar queen, undergoing extensive ground testing to figure out what works and what doesn't before it's taken to the skies. For example, its main engine was originally part of the F-18 Hornet and heavily modified to be a part of this prototype. At 22,000 pounds of thrust, it's powerful enough to accelerate the X-59 to Mach 1.4. But first, it needed to start after all of the modifications it underwent to fit inside the prototype. So it was a huge deal in November of 2024 when engineers gathered to witness the static test of the engine and its afterburners. Now, fortunately, everything went smoothly, and the retrofit was a success. Now, the next step is to actually fly this thing, and it's here where NASA faces yet another challenge. Because of the ban on sonic booms over American communities, there's only one place in the entire United States where they can test this aircraft's revolutionary capabilities. Edwards Air Force Base, a vast stretch of desert. And the testing campaign for this aircraft is pretty darn unusual. NASA is preparing to conduct large tests with hundreds of volunteers and a testing protocol unlike anything in aviation history. When you're trying to measure something as quiet as a car door closing from an aircraft moving at nearly 1,600 kilometers per hour, you need to rethink everything. The residents participating in these tests won't know when the X-59 is flying overhead. After all, how do you get an honest reaction to something that's supposed to be barely noticeable? So they set out to build exact replicas of the average American home. Then NASA plans to design experiments using dozens of speakers to simulate the sound of supersonic flight. Their goal is to find out how much noise people could tolerate if supersonic jets flew overhead. So now the next question is what happens if they succeed? Studies show that most of potential supersonic routes are over land. And for these routes, we've been forced to fly at less than half the speed we're capable of, all because of the sonic boom problem. Let's put that into perspective for a moment. New York to Los Angeles, five hours today. With supersonic flight, that would be cut to two hours and 40 minutes. The X-59 is planned to have its maiden flight by late 2025. And by 2027, NASA will present its findings to the International Civil Aviation Organization and the FAA. But as per usual, there's a catch. For the first time in aviation history, regulations won't just be based on technical measurements. They'll be determined by human perception. The success of the X-59 doesn't just depend on engineering. It depends on what people feel and hear in their everyday lives. So what do you think about NASA's X-59 jet? Could supersonic travel make a comeback in the near future? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. As always, 
Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.